Hi guys. Um, so I just finished making my first video about um, about me. What well, was an introduction about me, and then about why I'm making videos, and about my a little bit about my pregnancy. Well, a lot about my pregnancy, and about how it went. And so this video is about my actual birth and how that went, and um, a little bit about what happened afterwards. Um, okay, so we're going to start off with, um, right before I had her at week 40, I, by that time I could not sleep, I had so much pressure down there, but it was already constant to the point where I would just push it off and, you know, just ignore it, and, um, it was just, it was just annoying <laughs> at that point. I would, I couldn't walk. Um, not for a long time at least. Um, I couldn't stand for more than like five minutes, if that. Um, I, uh, I couldn't sleep because I was just so uncomfortable. I just, it was just miserable by week 40. Um, I had to write everything down, of course. Um, on September 30th, um, which was the day before I turned 41 weeks, um, which was on a Sunday, me and my husband were planning to go to church, so we woke up early, and, um, well, it wasn't really early, but early for me at that point, um, it was around 8, 8.30 a.m., we started getting ready, and around 9.30 or 10, I started having, I guess, minor contractions, but I didn't know that at that time, I thought it was maybe a stomach ache, because I was just so big, like, I couldn't tell the difference between pain and a stomach ache, and, Harper and like I just couldn't tell because it was just all mixed in there <laughs> um so around 9 30 to 10 I got minor contractions um they were really close together from the beginning but they weren't that painful and so that's why I kind of just shrugged it off um and so we left the house and church started at 11 so we got there and um like maybe around 11 15 my contractions were just so horrible and close together that i would grab my husband's arm and just squeeze it really hard so i wouldn't like make any noises and my body would get so tense and me i was hoping no one would notice because i was kind of embarrassed about having to get up and walk away during the middle of service um so I was just trying to like be brave and you know keep it until maybe church ended but by that point around 11 a.m. 11 15 a.m. or 11 20 um, I just couldn't take it anymore and I told my husband we need to go like now because it hurts so bad like we just need to go and so we got up and we walked away and um, I think one of the people helping out at church they're like, oh, is everything okay? And my husband's like, oh, she's going into labor. And one of the ladies heard, and she came out, and she's like, oh, like, are you going into labor? You know, I hope everything goes well. And she made, um, she did, a, she said a little prayer for us, and then we thanked her, and then we were on our way home. And we came home, and we got here maybe around 11.30, maybe 11 25 I'm not sure um, but we got there be around 1130 um, I double checked to make sure I had everything I needed and of course me being the person I am I overpacked and I was just psycho at that time um, so I had to double check make sure I had everything and make sure that I didn't forget my camera and everything and while I was doing all of that, my mom was timing my contractions, and she said, oh my god, they're so close. I'm like, yeah, they've been that way since they started. It's just the pain is getting worse. And so that's why I decided to come back home. And so we were on our way. To, we decided to go to the hospital. My mom, um, I think she wanted to go do laundry or something and because she knew it was going to take a while. So when she went to do that, me and my husband, we headed to the hospital. We got there around 12. Um, we were admitted. Um, they checked me for dilation. I was already four centimeters. Um, let me see. Yeah, I was four centimeters. And me, I, I am horrible with pain, like really bad. Like, I, I knew from the beginning, from when I found out I was pregnant, that I would most likely get the epidural because 
I have no pain tolerance whatsoever for anything. And then having the cerclage and taking it, have, having it taken out, um, I was just very sensitive from inside and every little thing just hurt. So I did get, I did ask to get the epidural around, well I did ask for it when I got there, um, but they didn't give it to me till around 2 p.m. And it was like the most amazing medicine ever for me because <laughs> it was just hurting so bad my contractions were off the chart and I was just so glad that I picked it um, and so you know uh, I had family there they came to visit I was calm and relaxed which was the way I wanted it because I did not want to be stressed and freaking out and yelling like that's just not the kind of person I am so I was just really happy that I had no pain and that I was just relaxed um, around six or seven in the afternoon the doctor came in to pop my water um, I had no problem with it whatsoever because I just wanted my baby to be healthy so he said you know the longer that they're in there um, the more problems there could be so I had my water popped and I was okay with it and so so that was around six or seven in the afternoon and then around ten at night um, I was fully dilated, my water was broken, I was ready to go. I was ready to go. Um, unfortunately, my daughter wasn't. <laughs> she did not want to come down um, lower in the birth canal. She, I guess she wanted to stay there, I'm not too sure. Um, but she, yeah, she didn't want to come down at all. Um, so now it was just a waiting game with her and waiting for her to come down. Um, the doctor did say if by the next day in the afternoon she wasn't down yet and I wasn't in the pushing stage then I would get a c-section but I knew that it would be way before then that she would come out because of all the pressure so all night I did not get any sleep because the epidural hadn't worn off because they had put a tube that kept constantly running the epidural inside but just the pain and the pressure from her going lower and lower was just so bad I could not sleep by oh and I was just really uncomfortable hospital beds are the worst <laughs> for me in my opinion but by around 4 30 yeah by 4 30 I was just in so much pain I was tearing up I told my husband tell the nurse I'm ready to go I want to push I could feel it like it's like ready to go everything is there and so she told he, my husband told the nurse and she kept trying to get me to wait and wait and wait but I told her no you know what if the doctor's not here I'm pushing either way because my baby wants to come out now and so they they did call the doctor um, and that was around 4 30 in the morning at 5 in the morning my mom arrived well she had been there the whole afternoon and the whole day the day before but she went home to get to sleep and I called her and she came around 5 um, the doctor got there around 5 30 and that's when I started to push. Um, I did tear, but I did not feel it at all. Um, there was a lot of pain, but what was worse was I felt like my ribs were going to break. I had never heard anyone mention that when they talked about their births, but I was, my rib, just my right side hurt so bad from pushing. I thought my ribs were lit literally going to break, and I was scared. Um, and then I, I, was, I felt like I was pushing for so long and I felt like there was no process because no one was telling me anything. And then finally my husband was like, oh, I can see hair. And that's when I got so motivated to push because I was like, oh my gosh, she's here. And like, she's almost here. And I couldn't believe it and so I was pushing harder and then finally she came out. Um, she didn't cry at first. Um, I think after a couple seconds and she started crying. Um, she was born at 6.05 a.m. Um, at exactly 41 weeks she was eight pounds two ounces and she was 20 inches long um, she was very light-skinned she had a lot of hair she had the biggest cheeks ever which was like so adorable um, she did have a bit of jaundice but it, the doctor said it was really mild and that all we had to do was just feed her keep feeding her and putting her under the sunlight which was kind of hard because it was October and here in California around October it was it was really hot but it was cloudy so we it, it did take a couple weeks for it to finally 
wash away, I would say, because it goes in their diaper. Um, I did, oh, her breathing, there was a little bit of water in her lungs, so the doc, so we were there a day extra, I would say, so we were there for around three days, um, just so they can keep an eye on her and make sure that it was water and not something else. Um, the doctor kept saying it would go away, so around, it did take a couple months for it to go away, actually. Every doctor's appointment, I would say, I would mention it, and they're like, oh, it'll go away, it'll go away. And it didn't go away till around three months, maybe a little bit longer, which was not good on my, in my opinion. I just, I didn't like that at all. Um, let me see. Um, I decided to breastfeed. Um, from when I found I was pregnant, I always knew that I would breastfeed. Um, I, I just always knew. I just knew that that was my way of bonding with her. Um, yeah, I knew I would bond with her more, um, and I would have a more connection with her, um, in my, um, like, the way it went with me. Um, I loved it. I love breastfeeding. Um, my daughter's eight months now, and I'm still breastfeeding her, um, and it's just going well. Um, I did have around three times I did get, um, mastitis, mastitis. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's um, when it's plugged ducts in your breast, and um, it's like a like an infection inside. And I would go up to like 104 degrees. I would get fevers. Um, it was horrible. I would want to quit every time because I was to the point where I was hallucinating during my fevers, and um, I would take antibiotics for it from the doctor that the doctor prescribed to me, but it was just so much pain and it hurt and I just wanted to give up, but I knew it was what was best for my baby. So I kept going and um, in the last couple of months we haven't had any, which has been great. Um, I do plan to breast, I, well I want to breastfeed her till she's 12 months, but I'm in the National Guard and next month in July, we will be leaving for two weeks to do training and I'm going to try to be like pumping while I'm there and I have been pumping lately so she can get breast milk while she's here with my husband and my mom um, and hopefully I can keep my supply going so I can keep breastfeeding her till she's um, 12 months but if not then I mean it's been a good ride with the breastfeeding I loved it um, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way and with the birth it was it wasn't what I expected at all but you know, my daughter's here, she's healthy, and that's all that matters, and maybe if I ever plan to have another one, then maybe it'll go a little bit different, but now I know what it's all like. Um, so yeah, that was my birth, and um, yeah, you know, I mean, my daughter's here, and that's all that matters. So my next video, I plan to make it from how her months, months one, two, three, um, and so, yeah, hopefully, maybe I'll be making that in the next couple days. Sorry that this video has been so long. Um, I'll try to split it up into two pieces if I can because I didn't think it was going to take that long to describe my birth. <laughs> but, yeah, if you have any questions or comments about my birth or about the cerclage or about um, how it all went, um, don't be afraid to ask. I'll do my best to answer as many comments as I can and um yeah hope you like my video bye